My goodness, ladies and gentlemen, gotta be one of the most anticipated videos that I could possibly make. In front of me today, the Vivo Apex. There's like everything that happened before this and then what will come after. Ambition boiled down into something you can hold. Smartphone design is dead. We talk a lot about differentiation in the space, especially in the Android world. That one's pretty good, that one's pretty good. Like which one? Every single manufacturer looked at this thing and realized immediately, how do we get there? They started working the next day. This screen to body ratio thing for people like you, that's the challenge. That's I guess for a smartphone maker the reason to be in this business now. But from a manufacturing standpoint, it's a super difficult problem to approach. And I hit this button. You get to see it for yourself, what this future looks like. It's not completely bezel-less. There's a tiny little bit of a chin over there. 1.8 millimeters on the top as well as the sides and 4.3 millimeters on the little tiny chin here, this little goatee. When the people from Vivo brought it over, they're like, no, no, no. The goal is zero bezel. First of all, in order to achieve this, there's a whole different manufacturing process necessary, which is part of the reason why you can't buy this phone right now. What it would cost to put this thing together is beyond what normal people would be willing to pay for a phone, at least right now. The goal is to make the bezel identical the whole way around. If you showed this thing to me when I was, oh, I don't know, 15 years old, I'd be like, that man is living in the future. So this particular design introduces all kinds of problems. Where's the front facing camera? Where are the proximity sensors? How do you unlock the device? But believe it or not, they're here and they function surprisingly well. So first off, let's talk about this front facing camera. It doesn't exist on the bezel at all. It's up here on the top and it's recessed. It's kind of nice to look at a display and not stare at a camera. So I just, I just think the hidden camera thing has some positive attributes for people who might be a little bit sensitive to having a lens facing them all the time. All right, privacy concerns, whatever. It's a full on motor that will push this camera up. I'm gonna show you how it works. Lift off, baby. And uh, hey, everyone can say hi now. There we go. Hey, hey, Kirk, say what's up. Bam, special, it's unprecedented. The beard hair test. I understand some of the apprehension about this particular decision. It's moving parts, it could possibly fail. The level of concern that you have, it almost directly maps to how important selfies or video conferencing is to you personally. If you're that kind of person that's using the front facing camera, I'm gonna go with you, you have a valid concern. There would be some serious engineering necessary to make that motorized front facing camera last for 5,000, 10,000, 100,000 actuations. Some other interesting things about the design here, power switch is actually, it's over here, it's where your finger lands, not where your thumb is. I do like this round button actually, it's very distinctive. You know right away when you're on it. You probably notice down here on the bottom bar we have this uh, fingerprint indicator this is a demo you can increase the security level by requiring two thumbprints instead of one to unlock the device I'll show you that in a moment so if I bring up the test you're gonna see what the potential lock screen would look like. And in this case, it's asking me to authenticate two fingerprints at the same time. Now, this is a possibility because of the size of the sensor area. Now, when these began to emerge, the size of that area was much smaller. The technology adjusts to you. Watch this. <laughs> like, that's the magic right there. I'm gonna delete. Fingerprint, okay, no more fingerprint. I gotta register. I'm gonna do a single fingerprint registration. This is the way I think most people will use this. So you press hard in this location over here and it grabs a little bit and then again, and then again. So now I back out and I go to the authentication test again. According to Vivo, the goal for the fingerprint scanner is to eventually be the entire screen. Oh my goodness, you're just not even thinking about it. Bam, 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 here we go. Single fingerprint, boom. Done, all right, boots up, boom, done, all right. I have to say, when I saw this emerge on the web, I was very skeptical. And now having tried it myself, I have to say, I think it exceeds my expectations, even though it's a little bit slow, it works surprisingly well on a product that's just a concept. Now, there are some security disadvantages to an optical fingerprint sensor. You are correct. Apple has made a huge deal of this face ID thing, multiple points. It's a big topic of conversation right now, and it's true. Optical scanners might not be the absolute most secure method 
of authentication. That said, you can always put the old school pin code in. What we're seeing here is sort of uh, an initial stage. I expect to see improvements. Let's get back to the display real quick. So why is it so interesting to have a bezel-less display? As the screens grow, if the device grows along with it, you end up with these really large objects in your pocket. I know that bothers Ryan to no end. So the shrinking bezel is an antidote because everybody wants a big screen. The goal is around 98% screen to body ratio. So when you hold this thing, it's basically all screen. How impressive this screen to body ratio is. How much video you get in such a small form factor. Now, another thing that kind of surprised me about this device, it maintains a headphone jack. Alongside the USB type C connector, we have a traditional 3.5 millimeter headphone jack. And I was like, if this is the phone of the future, is the headphone jack still a thing? I'm not so certain. I kind of like it because it gives a real nod to the tech community and the fact that we still value it. Why I think it makes sense. Why not? It's not doing anything to the form factor. It's not making the phone bigger or harder to hold. There's really no downside. They do have an OLED panel in here, which as far as I'm concerned is the best you can do right now. It's a flexible OLED panel because it actually has to be wrapped so that they can get these ultimate slim bezels. And beyond that, the microchips have to be mounted directly to the flexible circuit in order to fit. That's where the complexity comes in. How do you manufacture that at scale? But what's particularly compelling about this concept is the fact that it works so well. This isn't Samsung doing this. This isn't Apple doing this. This is Vivo doing this. The package functions surprisingly close to something that's finished. I came here knowing that I was going to look at something impressive, but I have to say, as a package deal, this thing here has exceeded even that. I believe even more now in my original tweet in which I said smartphone design is dead. For everybody else in the game, it's time to scramble, reconfigure, throw the design team out the door and figure out how to make a screen that you hold and that you see in the absence of anything else.